Hello everybody, in this episode we're going to be talking about a little known device that's in pretty much all of your shower heads nowadays and it's called a water saver. It's a little water restricting device. Um, hopefully we can zoom in here and see that little blue thing in there? A little o-ring around it. That's your water saver. Now they come in different colors, different varieties. This one is uh, purple. There it is. It's got the same builds. It's got a little o-ring around it. Uh, they, they are color coded. They're blue, they're purple, they're red, um, they're yellow. And what that means is the amount of flow restriction. Now uh, these are a water saving feature. They do have their purpose. Uh, with your conventional tank style water heaters, they work just fine. You don't need to take them out. Uh, on your conventional water heaters because those things will run at a trickle. They've already got the water warmed up, ready to go for you. Uh, it's not making it on demand. We started running into a problem with these guys when we started using the tankless water heaters exclusively. Now there's a lot of different brands out there, a lot of different makes and models of your tankless water heaters and they all pretty much say that they'll run at about 0.8 gallons a minute at the minimum. Well, I found out that's not necessarily true. You see what the water saver does, uh, I know the blue one is like six liters a minute uh, and the chart is all in liters. Um, that restricts you down to about a gallon and a half uh, a minute of flow. Well, these things really want more than that to stay running. Uh, you might get a little sand in the filter or something that's slowing you down even more, but we take those out nowadays. You've got, you've got to remove this. If you don't, this thing doesn't know to make hot water and it'll do this thing where it goes hot and cold, hot and cold on you while you're in the shower. Now, water savers are also in kitchen faucets and lavatory faucets uh, and in a lot of other plumbing fixtures as well. Uh, what I found out is you don't really have to take them out of your faucets, your kitchen faucet and your lavatory faucets and stuff. Those tend to work pretty well and they don't have that hot coal hot coal issue of course you're not standing under it spraying on you you're just washing your hands or some dishes or something um, but you don't want a cold shower so we take those things out getting this flow rate back up i like these things to run at about two gallons a minute uh, but they should be all right at a gallon and a half but we're going to take that out anyway uh, and you don't have to get the whole thing out. You can just kind of get that little black o-ring out of there and you've rendered it useless and basically that's just going to work like a little screen. So we take those out when we're dealing with tankless water heaters. Um, so let's go over here to my little table and uh, we're going to zoom in real close and I'm going to show you how to pop one of these things out. Okay, the first thing you're going to notice uh, when you pull these shower heads out of their package or their box or whatever, uh, most of them are going to have a little black uh, little washer in there. You're going to want to take that out of the way so you can get to your uh, water saver. Now hang on to this. Don't throw these away. Um, I used to chunk them and I didn't use them because we were Teflon taping the uh, shower rod before we put the head on. But I found if you can overkill or double kill uh, a potential leak spot, go ahead and do it. It's not going to hurt to leave this uh, O-ring in there. So put your O-ring back in there. Uh, Teflon tape your shower arm when you go to put this thing on. Um, uh, on that particular one, you got a little O-ring on a lot of your deltas. You've got this little gray filter tab thing and it just unscrews. Uh, you're going to want to save that too because that actually works very similar to this. It's just in a different, uh, it's a different model, different brand. Um, now, uh, on these guys, they're going to be little tabs. I think I've already broke one off on this, but there's like the three little tabs. There should be four little tabs in there. You're going to want to grab your needle nose pliers and go in there and grab on those tabs. And, yeah, I didn't think it was going to work out too well for me. Uh, if you can pull it, you can get it to pop out, but most of the time those little pieces are just going to break. They're just going to break off of there. So uh, what I would do, what I've always done in the field, just go ahead and break all those tabs off. See a little o-ring just hot once you broke, broke them all off of there? And you pull that little o-ring out, that little teeny little o-ring, and you can go ahead and chunk that. What you're left with is a, like a nice little screen thing there. 
you're done. You don't have to do anymore. Don't bash it in there. If you break that into there with a screwdriver or something, you're going to have to go fish all those little pieces out. Because those little pieces of plastic, these little pieces of plastic, they'll get caught up in there. They'll get over one of these little um, sprayers and they'll squeal and they'll make a whole lot of noise and you're getting a call from a homeowner and you got to run over there and figure out what's wrong with that shower head and it was because somebody just took a screwdriver and jammed it in there and broke that shower head broke that water saver into that head and that little o-ring is stuck down in some little tight little place squealing hollering and making all kinds of noise same for the blue one just get that little piece out of there now if you want to break it that's fine you can break it out of there but Get your little needle nose pliers and get up in there and uh, fish that thing out. And then you're going to want to put your little screen back in. This, this little plastic screen does actually work like one of these little rubber washers. These are just two different brands. Um, they're actually put out by uh, pretty much the same people, but one's called one thing. It's just the, the cheaper brand and one thing's called the other thing. But. All right, well, that's pretty much going to do it for our water saver uh, episode here. Just remember, you're going to have to take those things out of those shower heads when you're dealing with the new style tankless water heaters. Uh, got to keep those flow rates up. Got to keep that water moving or this thing doesn't know you're asking for water because this thing's not going to make hot water unless it knows you're asking for it. So you got to keep those flow rates up. If it's a conventional tank style water heater, water savers don't matter. Uh, it might be beneficial to your homeowner to leave those things in. It'll save them a little bit on their water bill. But something I've noticed, people don't want to save their water. Uh, when they get in the shower, they want to get hit with everything they can. So probably not a bad idea to take the water savers out of everything. They also come in kitchen faucets and lavatories and things like that. And they can also be removed out of those. But like I said, don't have a whole lot of problems with customer homeowner complaints. Uh, with water savers in uh, lavatories and kitchen faucets. All right, thanks a lot, guys.